We're ready. Thank you. Welcome to the regular meeting of Hamilton City Council for January 10th, 2024, a little after 6 o'clock. We're here in the City Council Chambers. Do a roll call, please. Moeller. Present. Pullman. Present. Ryan. Present. Fear. Present. Vaughn. Present. Nab. Present. Lauer. Present. We have a quorum. We're going to start off with an offering of prayer by Vice Mayor Eric Pullman. Followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you are able. Lord, as we enter the new year, let us seek blessings for our council, grant wisdom to guide decisions, strength to support our police and fire departments, and unity to ensure the safety and well-being of our community. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We're next going to special presentations. We've got a really special thing going on here first, and that's a swearing in for Amon City Council, re-elected Carla Fear. With another great citizen, Larry Fear. <laughs> Any I, Carla J. Fear. I, Carla J. Fear. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will obey the Constitution. That I will obey the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. That I will in all respect. That I will in all respect. Observe the provisions of the charter. Observe the provisions of the charter. And ordinances and of the city. Of <laughs> so you already know this. <laughs> And ordinances of the city of Hamilton, Ohio. And ordinances of the city of Hamilton, Ohio. And faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duty. Of the office of council member. Of the office of council member. Of the city of Hamilton. Of the city of Hamilton. Trek chairs. <laughs> These chairs. Thank you for the chairs, by the way. Very nice. Whoever's out of the Oh, good. That's because she got one, too. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We next go now to Home and Garden Awards with Ann Coombs. Ann? Hi. Hi. Tell us about Home okay. and Garden Awards. Uh, Mark and Stephanie Morgan, will you come forward, please? little daughter. <laughs> this is their beautiful house on uh, Ross Avenue. Wheelands. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about the home that we all know and love, like I'm sure <laughs> you folks <laughs> love. Mm -hmm. You want me to come up there? Sure, or? sure. <laughs> we usually do that. Oh, I, I started this in 05, and I just drive around and I find houses that take care of the city because I love this city and I want to reward them for all their hard work. And then I started doing Christmas ones a while back, so their beautiful Christmas home won this year. <laughs> Not a few words from the uh, appearance award winners. It is, it is beautiful. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I love decorating. I do for all the seasons, but uh, I appreciate the award and that everybody appreciated the decorations. Hopefully it brought some joy to people. <laughs> and they get the uh, framed picture there. We also have a certificate of appreciation from the city. That's from me. Thank you. City of Hamilton, Ohio. This is certified that Mark and Stephanie Morgan of 404 Ross Avenue are hereby awarded the Certificate of Recognition for receiving the December 2023 Home and Garden Appearance Award and for their dedication to keeping the city of Hamilton beautiful. Some of myself as mayor and acknowledged by all members of council. That's a famous home in the city of Hamilton. I mean, a guy named Chuck Stinger used to live there. And he's, nobody knows Chuck Stinger, I don't think. Maybe Larry does. I mean, he, matter of fact, my typing teacher at junior high school lived there. <laughs> Mr. Stinger's uh, wife, but then it was the Whalen home, and now it is the Morgan home. So thank you so much. It looks beautiful. Uh, those who drive down Ross Avenue will slow down. I'm sure they slow down to look at the house. Slowing down is a great thing. You got to say something. <laughs> I think she's <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so just thank you. Uh, it was kind of an odd uh, interaction with Anna. Just She happened to stop by one day when I was doing some work out in the backyard and just kind of caught me by surprise. But uh, thanks, Anna, for doing what you do and uh, nominating us this year. So I really appreciate it. A round of applause. I'm stealing your water. You got some uh, take home prizes, too. Oh. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Best water in the world. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. Happy Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. It's all right. I got a big one here. Okay. Maybe. Here, pass. Hey, another one just yeah, nice showed up. Off it right now. Like, I can't find anyone to pay for, <laughs> for rich water. So be oh gosh, there's there. more water. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Well, always bring my own. All right, we now go to uh, audience of citizens, and that is um, individuals who wish to make comments may make those comments during this part of the uh, city council meeting, or they may reserve the right to speak when the item is up for a uh, vote on council floor. All individuals who intend to speak are required to sign this blue public speaking book. And each speaker is allowed up to five minutes. Jim Lahneman. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I haven't seen it since last year. So happy new year. Yeah. Happy new year to you, Jim. Thank you. And um I just wanted to say, um, getting pretty much good now, you know. Um, and, um, actually, back in, um, I think it's back in uh, November, December, I pulled over um, on on uh, my street for, um, for um, actually, uh, for going a little speed because his car in front of me was the left of the back. I was out, I didn't even tell him about it. And, and she pulled over, so in that situation, she let me out. Real nice lady, and she let me out of the ticket. Real nice of her. So I just want to thank the police department for that, you know. It should be on the side of people, too, you know. Most of them. There are some, some uh, Hamlin cops are still a-holes, you know. But, you know, I'm saying, but um, I um, really enjoy the city, and I'm, I'll be ringing down for the city. Okay, Jim. That's all I'm going to say. I'm all you. right. You all have a good night and hope to see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all who signed the book. So we next go to um, the consent agenda. That includes um, staff reports, caucus reports, information report, including our November 2023 finance report, November 2023 investment report. So next, we take a look at what's on the caucus agenda. Um, it's a time when city council can ask questions and provide direction or comment on reports. I'll accept the motion that the regular meeting be recessed and agree the whole take place. Second. I should make my vice mayor Pullman, second by council member Ryan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. The motion is carried at 613. Mr. City Clerk, will you please uh, walk us through the caucus agenda? 
Absolutely. Uh, for starters, I'll, I will mention that we may bounce around a little bit with certain presentations, but we'll ensure that we have presentations for all items. Uh, our first presenter tonight will be our Director of Engineering, Mr. Rich Angle. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Citizens of Hap Hamilton. Happy New Year. We're um, ready to get started and have lots of activities planned, lots of a construction plan for this year. First is the 2024-2025 uh, street resurfacing assessment roll. This is actually, we'll consider it phase one because we have a, additional um, resurfacing projects planned after this, but this is the first one we're going to present for the uh, assessment roll. This is part of the um, Ohio Department of Transportation Urban Paving Program, Millville Avenue. So pr prior to doing any resurfacing, we want to um, go through and repair the sidewalks and drive approaches associated with that. So we'll be uh, doing the concrete work on Millville Avenue from the corporation line east all the way to the railroad tracks. It's quite a big project. That'll be um, started here fairly shortly. Uh, we have a water main that's also being constructed on that street prior to us starting this project, but we want to get started on getting the assessment roll resolved and uh, taken care of prior to that. Also, Eaton Avenue is another project that we will be resurfacing this year, and that project will begin at the um, intersection with Park Avenue and go north to the uh, Two Mile Creek Bridge, and we'll be doing the concrete repair and work on that project. And then also Donna Avenue uh, from Elizabeth to Millville Avenue. Any questions on this proposed assessment role and project? We'll hear a lot of thanks about Eaton Avenue, I feel sure. Yep. Thank you, Rich. And just continue on. Next is the uh, Gateway Avenue dedication plat. This is quite interesting. This um, dedication plat was required as part of the Shadow Creek apartment development, which um, occurred back in 2004. So this project should have occurred 20 years ago. We discovered it when we were um, obtaining easements and right away for the Tylersville Road project and discovered that there should have been a 20-foot additional standard highway easement associated with Tylersville Road, as well as the fact that Gateway Avenue was never dedicated as a public street back then. So we are um, fixing old uh, projects that should have been done previously. Um, we, did this, we did the dedication plant with staff in-house so that we could get it done quickly, get a uh, presented to council and then um, have that uh, easement available for us to begin our Tylersville Road construction. As you know, that project is scheduled to begin here within the next month or so. Any questions on this? This is the copy of the dedication plan. Questions? Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> In our uh, sign shop, we presently have two existing full-time employees designated as public work sign shop maintenance workers with no classification between those two or any others we might want to hire in the future. So we are proposing to create a public work sign shop maintenance worker one, two, and three classifications this will create incentive for existing employees and future employees to uh, continue education and to provide certifications, create a succession plan for our sign shop. There are no new full-time employees being added as part of this. And the um, AFSME Local 475 and the administration have approved this proposed change in our classification. Are there any questions? We're good, thank you. And lastly, you're aware that we had approached council last year about 
participating with the Ohio Department of Transportation on resurfacing State Route 128. Uh, ODOT was going, ODOT's going to resurface the um, Pyramid Hill Boulevard on all areas where the center line of the corporation line is within the center of the street and the city is going to be responsible for funding the paving of the Pyramid Hill Boulevard with the entire street that's within the city corporation limit. And last year we passed resolution for preliminary consent. Now ODOT is requesting final consent for approval. And the good news is that last year we had an estimated cost to the city of 110,000. As you can see on the screen, it's now down to a little, almost $92,000. So we have a little, nearly a $20,000 saving in the preliminary cost estimate. Are there any questions on this? This is the uh, limits of the city responsibility for the paving. Thank you. Thank you. And next up will be a presentation by our Executive Director of Infrastructure, Mr. Edwin Porter. Good evening, Mayor Moeller, members of City Council, Hamilton Community. I'm here today to present upon um, Pleasant Avenue Landfill Utility Easement. So the Pleasant Avenue landfill site um, consists of approximately 8.82 acres of land that was a private landfill that opened in the 1940s. Uh, the city of Hamilton leased and operated the site from 1967 until October 1970 when it closed. Um, the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency, um, OEPA, has deemed the, the city a responsible party for this site. Uh, the city of Hamilton has an Ohio EPA approved explosive gas monitoring plan for the site and as a part of the implementation of a remediation plan, the city of Hamilton requires a utility easement for the installation of an active methane gas collection system and purchase of the permanent utility easement on this piece of property has been negotiated to be $1 and the city will provide area lighting around the utility easement. So here is a a aerial photograph that shows the totality of the easement. Um, it actually exists as three separate, um, well, I guess four separate utility, three separate utility easements, A, B, and C. So you see A and B on this. Um, and this last slide here shows the, um, the location, which a overhead electric service uh, for the active methane gas collection system and area light will be installed. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we'll have a verbal presentation by our Executive Director of Public Safety, Mr. Scott Scramese. Good evening, Mayor, members of council and citizens. Uh, the caucus report that's in front of you tonight is a part of the reorganization that we've been talking about the police department for the past several months. If you recall, we had uh, two captains in a collective bargaining unit. Uh, we've worked with the FOP to eliminate that bargaining unit. And tonight we're recommending a new classification of assistant police chief, which is a schedule A position and is not part of a collective bargaining agreement. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Uh, moving on to items four and five, we will have a presentation by our Director of Health, Ms. Cindy Hogg. Good evening, Mayor, Council members, and citizens of Hamilton. Tonight I'm here to speak to you about the authorization of two agreements concerning our health department. The first agreement concerns the Southwest Ohio Public Health Region Regional Mutual Aid Agreement. This is an agreement between the 13 public health agencies in Southwest Ohio, Adams County, Brown County, Butler County, Claremont County, Clinton County, Hamilton County, Highland County, Warren County, 
City of Cincinnati, City of Hamilton, City of Middletown, and City of Springdale uh, Health Departments. This agreement gives the participating public health agencies the ability to request assistance from each other when preparing, responding, or recovering from an emergency situation or disaster. This collaborative approach will allow our agencies to work together to meet demands for equipment, personnel, and other resources. This agreement will help facilitate our health department's response and protect our citizens in an emergency situation or disaster. Before I move on to the second agreement, um, do you have any questions? The second agreement concerns the Children with Medical Handicaps program. Our health department has not been able to participate in this program for several years due to the COVID response and staffing needs. We would like to participate in this program again as it provides a much needed service to the children with special health care needs and their families in our city. The grant funding will offset the nursing services provided through this program. This program is funded through the Ohio Department of Health, Bureau of Child and Family Health. It is a safety net program that supports children with special health care needs and their families. There's a wide range of health care needs that are covered. Children with cleft palates, cystic fibrosis, and cancer as a few examples. A public health nurse is linked to a family with a child with special health care needs. The nurse takes on a case management role, helping the family maneuver through a network of specialized doctors, obtaining specialized equipment, and navigating financial resources. These families face so many challenges, and having a public health nurse who can assist them with their child's needs is a service that is important for our health department to provide. Please consider these agreements and the positive impact that they will have on our community. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, moving on to items, let's see, uh, I think seven and eight, we'll have a presentation by our Director of Planning, Ms. Liz Hayden. Good evening, City Council and residents of Hamilton. Tonight, Planning Commission has sent you two conditional use requests. The first is for 999 Laurel, which is um, a industrial site that um, five years ago or so, uh, the building burnt down and it's a slab now, um, right on Laurel next to the railroad tracks. And about a year and a half ago, Napier Trucking School got a conditional use to use that site for their trucking company. Uh, they're, they're, they train truck drivers, uh, but it was only a two-year approval because it was more viewed as more of a temporary use and that um, the intent for that site would be um, something, a, a building constructed of some sort there eventually. So it was a two-year approval. They came back along with the owner and asked for an extension for two more years to use that site. Um, that was the... They've, it's been working out well for them. The neighbors um, seem to find it to be a low impact use and the, the property owner, um, which is Kaivak, said uh, that they're not ready to move forward with their, prod, their construction project. So Napier uh, came back and requested to extend it for two years. Um, Planning Commission recommended approval. Uh, there was some, uh, it, a question that came up about, well, there were two questions that came up um, since Planning Commission uh, uh, recommended approval, which is about the impact that Napier trucks are having on our, on congestion in our community. Um, and we, I checked in with the owner of Napier Trucking and they let us know that they have they currently only have two trucks on the road right now, and it's the, the max they've ever had since 2008, and the max they think they will have is four. Um, and I reviewed this with our um, Department of Infrastructure uh, Executive Director, and uh, it sounded like it, that was a satisfactory information to kind of feel like it wasn't as big of an impact as we thought it might be on our, on our road system. The other thing was there was a question about if two years is too long of an extension. 
for something that's deemed to be temporary. Um, so this is a conditional use. So if that's something that you would want to consider, um, that would be, you know, some if you concur with the Planning Commission's report, this would be the last that you see of this, but you have the ability, if you would like, to request that this go on for first and second reading to talk about changing conditions of approval, if you would like to do that. Um, you have any, and also, um, there is a, a the architect for the project, Stephen Gephardt, is here to answer questions. The owner of the company wasn't able to be here tonight. Do you have any questions about this one? Has there been any negative feedback at all, or much feedback at all from the from the residents? Yes. In it, so when it initially came to planning planning commission two years ago, there was concern. So I was pleasantly surprised that the res the neighbors actually mo mostly we didn't hear anything. They all get an invitation. Every everybody who owns property within 500 feet. Um, but actually, I think we even got one or two people that said that they like having it nearby because it's a low impact use and not as busy as something else. So it it seems to be um, working out well there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I saw that when I go by there all the time, <clears throat> I did notice that, that one day they had a crew out there cleaning the lot up, um, pressure washing, blowing it, stuff like that. That's not an expense of ours. They're doing that, correct? Correct. They are They are the ones cleaning it up. And they said that she mentioned um, that they're cleaning it up, that it, the, the trash and debris is mostly coming from, you know, after hours, people hanging out on the, but they clean it up every morning. And they do. I mean, I've, I've seen them out there a couple of times, so I'm just wondering if we were doing it, but it's pretty nice that they're doing it. Thank you. Yeah, and, and so far when we've had issues, they've been responsive, Great. if that there were ever questions or anything like that. <clears throat> The second one is a conditional reuse request for 16 and 18 Gordon Avenue. Um, this is a church that's been vacant for quite some time. It is a conditional use to request. It's a it's a residential zone district, and to work, to to do more than one single family unit in this district um, is a conditional use request. So they're at re requesting a conditional use to use it as a duplex. You can see that to do what they're proposing, actually they need to add a second story, so they're proposing alterations to the building. Um, what you're seeing is the uh, existing brick to remain and then um, hardy plank or fiber cement board be used as siding on the second story and then the vinyl siding that's on the rear will be replaced with the hardy fiber cement board as well. Um, they are proposing to it's right now it's pretty much full concrete property and they're proposing to rip some of it up and add landscaping areas and they want to use it as a short-term rental and this was something that planning commission recommended approval as well do you have any questions on this one questions mr mayor please so they both will be short-term rentals yes they're fairly good sized correct there's 8,000 square feet total i believe it said so, yeah, yeah, it's a big site. Okay, so there'll be off-street parking there? Will they use that lot? Quite a bit. I think they have like eight or nine spaces. Okay, and would that be sufficient if each of those were occupied? And I don't know if they're three or four bedroom, but that could involve, you know, five, eight, maybe more cars? Or is there a it's, regulation that says you have to have that many spots? So to, right now our Zone, zoning code about parking does not contemplate size of units so that and that's something that we have discussed mm -hmm. but right now technically they need three parking spaces but to your point do they have enough parking spaces and that is something we hadn't discussed because it is it's a church parking lot so it actually does have a lot of parking um because it was it you know but when it was a church it would have an influx of people sure. so that hadn't that particular question hadn't really hit our radar but it's a it's a good point if if there was a big group but again we do t say that you can only have four unrelated individuals in a 
short term or in any unit. And so there shouldn't be like a big party there. There shouldn't be a big group of people because it's you're not supposed to have more than four unrelated yeah. people there. And it didn't look like there was parking on the street right there. So I. I yeah, I'm it is wrong. a corner lot. So there would be on summer. Oh, there would on the side street. Yeah. OK. OK, because because of the size of the unit and the number of vehicles that I thought could be there, I just didn't know how they were going to accommodate that. Or if they were private, would they have a hot tub outside or something, you know? I don't they did know. not show that on the site plan, so that would not be part of uh, the <laughs> okay. deal. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we'll have a presentation by our Assistant Director of Engineering, Mr. Alan Messer. Good evening, members of council, citizens of Hamilton. Um, the proposal here is to change a job classification that currently exists. The city historically had a secretary for every director once upon a time. Um, that position was called an administrative secretary. At this point in time, there were two individuals left in that position. We we're looking at what those two individuals were doing, looked at the job descriptions, and it described things such as sending faxes and filing and setting up meetings and things that technology has, has replaced for quite some time now. So we looked at what are those two individuals actually doing, came up with a revised job description, proposed to change the description of that classification from administrative secretary to administrative coordinator. Um, some of the type functions that you're doing today are like basically managing the monthly parking and, and managing things like our right-of-way violations for public works. Um, the two positions left are public in public works and engineering. So we're proposing to make this change um, and reflective of that increased level of responsibility change the pay range from a 28 to a 34. There any questions? Thank you. Uh, next up will be a presentation by our Executive Director of External Services, Mr. Tom Vanderhorst. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. Um, I'm here to talk to you tonight about uh, caucus item number 12, which is a recommendation relative to uh, directing the city manager to approve a lease agreement uh, for an easement agreement for the cell tower out of Potter's Park. This is an existing cell tower. Um, this is a map. And just to orient you uh, to the left on this map is Baden High School. Um, to the right, you can see the clubhouse over at uh, Potter's. Uh, so, so this, where it's circled, is where the existing cell tower exists now. This is a street view from it. Uh, the current lease expires in 2066. Gosh, it's hard to say. It's even so far out. Uh, but you've seen this a couple of times. Uh, it's come up. It's been renewed. Um, so what we're doing now is just trying to authorize a full buyout of this for 50 years. Uh, the Hamilton's Parks Conservancy Board approved this in August of 2022, so they have vetted this already. Uh, currently, there's $20,000 of annual income. The consultants that we spoke with said if you can get 20 times whatever your annual rents are, you're doing well. Uh, so this tops out at 61411 in 2061 to 2066. But take into consideration those are dollars 40 years into the future. So this proposal is a 50-year easement. It's a lump sum payment of $405,000. That would go into the golf fund, and it would be used to fund golf operations. Uh, I think what you'll see if you approve this is those monies will be uh, uh, used to fully finish out the cart paths out there at Potters that desperately need done. And what was nice about this lease when we compared it to the other ones, because we had a couple on the table, this one also offered a 50-50 revenue split for additional tenants. So you might see additional tenants, and they'll use a little bit more space, uh, but not much. 
And the reason why we did this, I mean, we had a really deliberate conversation in the Parks Conservancy meeting, and this is uh, a snippet from um, a news uh, article I saw this week. Uh, Starlink, which is one of uh, Elon Musk's company, launched a satellite, which they basically said was gonna be a cell tower. So our concern is, is that those rents, while we're getting them, uh, they may not continue forever. This, this is going to become obsolete technology. So, like I said, there's going to be a lump sum payment. This is going to be used to address capital needs, and then we want to make sure that we get the money while it's still a, a commodity that we can monetize. Any questions? Yeah. So you're you're expanding this a little bit? Yeah, potentially, I think that they said maybe 1500 square feet around the area i mean we would have the right of first refusal for that so it's not like it's going to go into a tee box or anything like that no reason for this to become a man-made mulligan in any no way. <laughs> no no okay. just check i did uh i did ask chat gpt today to say you know give me some humor to start this and it was can you can you hear me now can you hear me now <laughs> walks off like that. <laughs> uh, next up for agenda item number 13 via presentation by our uh, Director of Economic Development, Mr. Jody Gunderson. Mayor of City Council, uh, citizens of Hamilton. Uh, the item that's before you tonight is a recommendation relative to authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a termination agreement related to actions of Great Miami Brewing Real Estate Holding LLC, otherwise known as AMP. Um, in August of 2021, the city entered into a uh, development, purchase and development agreement for what would be the prior um, substation on Maple Avenue at 514 uh, Maple. And um, since that time, um, the group that has tried to put together that project has, uh, has had some uh, experienced notable changes within the market, including uh, the cost of materials, um, the cost of lending, and the mere fact that uh, They've uh, not seen a lot of excitement by lending institutions within, um, within, well, the uh, Cincinnati market for lending for uh, this type of operation. Amp House was successful, however, um, in purchasing the CSX land that is adjacent to their property. So there will be a combination of not only the substation, but also the land that was uh, purchased by them, um, which uh, they also have put together um, within this. They've, they've done a lot of the environmental assessment and remediation for the property as well. Um, at this time, um, it is the recommendation of our office and council receive the report, concur with the recommendation and direct the preparation of the necessary legislation. With that, if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we'll have a presentation by our Acting Director of Business Services, Ms. Christine Carr. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, and residents of Hamilton. My name is Christine Carr. I'm the Acting Director of Business Services for the City of Hamilton. I'm here tonight to provide a brief summary on caucus item 14 regarding amending uh, economic development agreement between the city and 80 acres. Um, the purpose of this amendment would be to incentivize further growth um, of 80 acres within the City of Hamilton. The city currently serves 80 acres under an existing EDA. We are proposing an amendment to the EDA to support growth and expansion that wasn't contemplated under the existing EDA. Um, staff is working with 80 acres currently to finalize the details of the proposed amendment, um, and that will be on the agenda at the 24th um, meeting uh, for your consideration. Additionally, Mike Zelkind um, with 80 Acres plans on being in attendance at that meeting to provide a brief presentation. 
um, and Tish Livingston with Infinite Acres is here tonight. Do you have any questions? Welcome and uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, if I could add maybe just a little context to the report. Um, as council is aware, uh, Tisha Livingston, who's with us tonight, Mike Zelkin, were the co-founders of 80 Acres, which is a, a vertical farming company, or some people call it, a, I think, a controlled agricultural environment um, farming system. But 80 Acres is a top three electric consumer in the city of Hamilton. Uh, Wisen Trust that you saw on a, a council agenda not too long ago is, is our largest electric consumer. Uh, Cyrus One, which runs um, a data center in Hamilton, is our second largest consumer. So uh, 80 Acres is currently the third largest. There's been a lot of disruption and challenges in the vertical farming industry in the last 12 to 24 months that I'm sure Tisha could tell you about today or Mike can tell you about in two weeks. Um, but the agreement that we entered into with them in January 23 is essentially the same thing they're looking for in January 2024 um, uh, to help them get through 2024 and also uh, put them on the path for further expansion in, in Hamilton. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. And then our last item on the caucus agenda will be presented by our Director of Public Works, Mr. Jim Williams. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, um, audience of citizens, as well as um, other patrons and businesses. My name is Jim Williams, I'm the Director of Public Works, and tonight I'm asking for emergency requisition of, of a truck that we need within our streets and sewers department. Um, essentially, we'd like to use the existing ordinance uh, that is available to us, um, section 171.06 um, uh, A of the codified ordinances that allows us to waive the advertising of the purchase of a new truck uh, within public works. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a severely aging fleet. Um, Right now, the truck industry is, is about 12 to 18 months before we can get a new truck. We happen to have just a great relationship uh, from one of our supervisors, superintendents actually, with uh, a local dealer. And they had a truck that met our specifications that came available, and we jumped on it, um, but only with your approval. So it's being held for us right now, and it's, and it's actually spec to our uh, use and needs, and we can put it in service immediately if you approve this. Now, um, but with that said, we have trucks uh, that essentially serve multi-purpose for all four seasons throughout um, the, what we experience here in Hamilton. Spring is litter collection, mulching, alley maintenance, storm cleanup. Summer is paving, hauling, and excavating. Fall is leaf collection and hauling. Winter is snow and ice removal. And that's what concerns me the most. As it is right now, as we speak, um, we have, we're down four trucks. And you'll see here in the next few slides, um, you know, what's actually going on. To give you an idea, the average age of our fleet, is, again, is 14 years. Um, our total approximate value of all fleet assets is $36,400,000. Um, and as you can see, this uh, 750 assets is truck, cars, SUVs, and some additional landscape, landscaping equipment. Um, unexpectedly, um, we had a uh, unit number 1247, 2008 International, with 61,000 miles, which really isn't high mileage, okay? The city's not that big, of course, but if you look at the engine hours, it's unbelievable, okay? So we track by engine hours and not mileage. Um, but in essence, it came in for preventative maintenance, preseason preparation for snow. And um, essentially, we thought we had a, um, a leaking head gasket, ended up being a cracked head, cost us $13,500 to fix that truck. Um, the next one. Uh, is unit 1246, the 2008 International, 68,000 miles. We thought um, came in for preseason prep. Uh, initial diagnosis was the number two injector was bad. Um, then essentially further investigation found the internal um, uh, damage occurred, internal damage occurred from a roller tappet that had broken. And so that cost was uh, $34,000. And so these 
we have world-class fleet mechanics, and these guys um, work um, just tirelessly in repair of our fleet, and they got this thing up and running. But that's the kind of problems we're dealing with because of our aging fleet. So we'll talk more about that. But for now, I'm just asking for the emergency requisition to replace one of our existing units um, that is due to be replaced uh, for about eight, about 14 years. So that's um, this is a list of our, our current trucks that we have ready and down. Uh, ready means ready for snow removal. And, and we have 14, we need 17. And so I know something as far as weather is coming this way the next week. Uh, we're hoping um, that we'll be ready to uh, support that, that uh, need. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Any questions about anything I just spoke of? Thanks for finding the, the one so quickly. That's Mr. Mayor. Please. I'm assuming, Jim, I just have to ask this question. That's a competitive uh, price, 113000 Yes, ma'am. And so to, to answer your question, we actually went out and got um, competitive quotes. Um, again, there were 12 to 18 months out, um, and, and it was higher. And so I believe the, the one quote that we got that should be in your packet was, um, I think it was $121,000. So in essence, it, it was lesser than, it, it was competitive. It, if we had gone competitive, it would have won the bid. But the issue is that we didn't have time to do that. We needed to make, we take action on this now. Otherwise, um, they would release it to another buying customer. Perfect, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Thank you, Jim. Thank you, appreciate it. And that concludes our presentations. Yeah, I accept the motion that the committee of the whole be closed. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Fear, seconded by Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Hearing none, that motion is carried at 6.50. Um, I accept the motion that the regular meeting be reconvened. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Nab, seconded by Council Member Fear. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller? Yes. Holman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Motion adopted, 7-0. 651. Mm -hmm. I'll accept the motion about the uh, reports of the consent agenda. Here. Vice Mayor Pullman? Make motion that with the exception of the items so noted, council receive the reports of the consent agenda and concur in the recommendations. Second. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor Pullman, second by Council Member Vaughn. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that motion is carried at 651. We now go to council actions pertaining to legislative items. Is that the motion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move that a note be made upon the minutes that each member of council was furnished a printed copy of each item of legislation prior to its being considered at this meeting. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn, second by Vice Mayor Pullman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. That motion is carried at 652. Now I'll go to pending legislation. And um, second reading of an ordinance amending our, our zoning ordinance. An ordinance amending the zoning ordinance of the City of Hamilton, Ohio by amending Section 1250 Zoning Land Use Chart, Section 1400 Accessory Uses, Section 1700 Signs, Section 1925 Industrial Design Standards, and Section 3900 Glossary, City of Hamilton. Applicant, second reading. Mayor. Um, Councilmember Nab. I move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Mr. Councilmember Nab. Second by Councilmember Ryan. Any discussion or comments on this one? Roll call vote. Moeller? Yes. Pullman? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Fear? Yes. Vaughn? Yes. Nab? Yes. Lauer? Yes. Warrants adopted. 7 0. Now go to new legislation. <coughs> First thing an emergency ordinance involving the pay range. An emergency ordinance amending Schedule A of the city's classification and compensation plan as set forth in emergency ordinance EOR 2023-12-106 adopted December 13th, 2023 as amended from time to time by amending the pay range of the resident services coordinator classification. First reading. Thank you. 
Next piece of legislation is a, a resolution involving an infrastructure grant for our uh, water and wastewater system. A resolution authorizing and directing the filing of a grant application with the Ohio Department of Development's Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Grant Program and authorizing and directing the city manager to execute any and all documents to receive said grant funds. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Vaughn. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. Second. Motion by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Vice Mayor Pullman. Any discussion about this one? Hearing none, roll call vote. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Resolution adopted. 7 0. Thank you. We now go to audience of the city manager. City manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, just two items. Uh, the first, um, just wanted to, in case anyone missed it, bring it to the attention that uh, Carrie Callahan, who is the owner of Callahan Cabinets, passed away uh, unexpectedly. Uh, I think many of you know that Carrie was born and raised in Lindenwald, owned and operated a business in Lindenwald. Uh, you know, I've known Carrie probably at least 10 years, and he was just a great small business owner in Hamilton, Ohio. Um, he was very passionate about Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts in, in Hamilton. I think he served on the Republican Central Committee in Butler County, but just a very involved individual. But um, anyway, it's just very sad news, and I know that uh, they're having a, a visitation, a funeral for him this Friday night. Uh, the other I just wanted to make council aware of, I received an email from Todd Hilton inviting me over to tour Shooters next Tuesday night. Uh, they're really making good progress. Every time I eat at El Mariachi, I always drive by and just take a peek at it, but it's, it's really exciting. And after seeing the, set, the success of Third Eye Brewing on Route 4, that that type of space is really high in demand in Hamilton, Ohio. So um, again, another small business owner that uh, uh, sincerely appreciate their investment in Hamilton. Thank you. Thank you. Audience of City Council. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Pullman. Just wanted to report something on the Butler County TID. The, um, next meeting for North Hamilton Crossing is January 22nd at Fair Avenue at the, um, actually, sorry, I got the wrong one. It would be at Garfield uh, Middle School, 530. It's basically gonna be a short presentation and a workshop, and it's, it's gonna be, for the North End neighborhood. So I would say my North End people, please uh, write this date down, January 22nd um, at Garfield at 530. And like I said, it will be a short presentation about your neighborhood and they will break up in small groups and do some workshops. So it should be a pretty good night for that. Thanks for mentioning invite council to come by, so. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Ryan. I reached out to uh, Middletown City Councilman uh, Zach Farrell to gauge their interest in uh, restarting the uh, Hamilton Middletown Task Force. Uh, they are ready to go. They are excited to meet. So I think uh, Mayor and Susan, um, they're going to get back to me with some dates. Great. And uh, we're going to get stuff ready to go and um, we'll let you know. Thanks for doing that. Good. I was with the mayor yesterday and she's very excited to okay. Great. pick our brains. Good. Anyone else? I mentioned Saturday night. Past weekend was really busy around the entire city. Mm -hmm. Everywhere was busy. <clears throat> Spooky nook, but it was important for our residents to stay in Hamilton and do things. And then you've got all the people who are visiting Hamilton. And that's just a great thing for, for our citizens as well as um, our uh, guests. I want to mention Ken Callahan. Uh, he's a city employee, was appointed to be on the Butler County Veterans Service Commission board as a commissioner. Uh, he worked with Tim Nab and myself on various veterans projects. He's, uh, he's a great guy. He, uh, he earned that because of what he does helping out vet veterans, but the veterans deserve someone like that to, uh, to connect them with uh, benefits and all. He's just a, a great guy and a, and a great city employee. And I got to mention, I was over near the, the new Justice Center. That place is just popping up. I mean, it's amazing great. to watch it, and um, it's going to be a great location and a great place for uh, for our uh, law enforcement and for our court system. So. Anything else? Mr. Mayor. Please. Uh, just a reminder that Monday is Martin Luther King Day, and the march will start at Booker T. Washington at 10 a.m., so everyone is welcome to join. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we're going to...
into executive session, Mr. City Manager? <coughs> Excuse me, yes, sir. Uh, for two different items, uh, the first is to consider confidential information related to the uh, marketing plan, specific business strategy, uh, or personal financial statements of an applicant for economic development assistance. And the second is to consider the appointment, employment, promotion, or compensation of a public employee. Thank you. Regarding your first request, is there a motion to executive session is necessary to protect the interest of an applicant or the possible investment or expenditure of public funds to be made in connection with the various economic development projects. So moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Nab. Thank you, Vice Mayor Pullman. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Lauer. Yes. Motion adopted 7 0. It was adopted at 6 59. And is there a motion to go in executive session for those stated purposes given by the city manager? So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion made by Council Member Vaughn. Second by Council Member Fear. Roll call vote on that motion, please. Moeller. Yes. Pullman. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Fear. Yes. Vaughn. Yes. Nab. Yes. Flower. Yes. Motion adopted, 7 0. That is at 6 59. Uh, that takes care of our public business. We'll come out of executive session only to uh, adjourn the regular meeting. So thank you all for being here.